Hello! And welcome to your 50 second SQL Server tutorial! My name is Johnny DeLuca! I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be ridiculous if I did the whole tutorial in that voice. That was the Seinfeld voice. Hello! Anyways, today I want to talk to you guys about handling T-SQL errors. So, as with basically any programming language, T-SQL provides methods for handling errors and exceptions during execution. T-SQL uses the try and the catch, which is similar to Microsoft Visual C Sharp, for those of you who are familiar with C Sharp. Now, when writing T-SQL, you wrap the code in the try block, and if an error occurs, the control is sent to the catch block. Within the catch block, you should enclose T-SQL code that will handle the errors. The following is the try-catch syntax. We see right here. This is the try-catch syntax. Now, SQL underscore statement, seen right here, is any single T-SQL statement. And right to the right of it here, statement underscore block is any set or batch of T-SQL statements. This applies both to the try and catch block. The try and catch blocks must be constructed together. Uh, finally, in SQL Server 2012, Microsoft has introduced the throw statement, which raises an exception and transfers execution to a catch block. Block. Right here is an example of throw. Uh, we can take a look at error underscore number right here. That must be between the range of 50,000 and 2,147,000. 483,647 and it can be a constant or variable but it's optional when implementing error handling using T-SQL. Message as seen right here describes the error and can be a string or variable and state as seen here must be between 0 and 255 and can be a constant or variable. Uh, the statement preceding the throw statement must end with a semicolon. Colon. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a live example of how to implement error handling using T-SQL constructs. So let's get rid of that. Don't need it. Let's go grab this block of code. Copy that. Go ahead and type this in. And then to start, I want to get rid of this line of code. So, uh, Get rid of that line of code, and I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and execute this code as it as you see right here. Okay, we don't. There's nothing there. So notice that the query returned an empty set, but more important, it did not return an error. Instead of returning an error, the catch block consumes the error. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get rid of. Let's just put the throw in. Okay, get rid of that. Now let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and execute. Oh, okay. Divided by zero error uh, encountered. So, adding the throw statement to the catch block forces the client to display the error message. The throw returns more accurate results and in most cases provides the developer with enough info to effectively handle the error. And if you want to customize the error that will be provided by SQL Server, you can just replace the throw statement that we see right here, this guy, with what I had originally. Let's go ahead and, okay, so now what happens when I go ahead and execute it? Okay, boom, we get the error message that specifically says you divided my zero. So, pretty cool. You now are a rock star with handling uh, SQL Server errors. I uh, thank you for stopping by this tutorial. And if you have any further questions, um, go ahead and leave them in the comments section, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next tutorial.